Hey everybody, the uh, OpenNSI Scalar tool set has been re released in a Beta 3 version and it is awesome. It is another game changer. Um, you can see my frame rates are still staying around 30, which you're probably thinking, okay, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that I've increased my resolution and I've increased a lot of my settings. I can actually make out all the individual boulders down there in that pile of rubble at the bottom of the cliff. I can make it all out. I can see all the details extremely clearer right now, or I should say much more clearly than I have been even previously. And I just started playing with this, um, so I'm sure it's going to only get better. But let me show you some of the new features, and again, this is just a quick quick video after I have played with this more I'll do something more in depth but just to show you it's got some new features one it broke the menu up into four tabs the performance one up here you can see you can choose anamorphic or on or off which if you have it off then you have one size to select but if you have it on and of course you can't go back up on these but if you have it on, then you can actually set the width and height individually. The sharpness is still the same. The next big change is this guy, this fixed foveated rendering. And what this does is this actually controls the amount of rendering power done to your peripheral vision. And so if you go at preset, I had the same problem that someone else had mentioned online, uh, Pie in the Sky Tours. If you go with preset, you end up with a big black line in your view. So you're going to want to go with custom. But you can see, I can go down here, I can hit performance, I can hit quality, and then I can... Now you see the black line that just appeared over there on the horizon. I can go to balanced, I can go to wide. Yeah, but it doesn't get rid of it. It's, I can still see it out of the corner of my eye. So you want to go to custom. And then you can adjust these settings here. And I'll play with these and explain them more. But they control your peripheral vision. You may just be able to make out the bottom of the view where it's kind of a little fuzzy. Um, and I can actually increase that if I go this way. change down here and you can see that they're changing together because the inner ring cannot be uh, bigger than the outer ring so I can I think that's how it works yes yeah see, I can go down on the inner ring and you will see the peripheral vision get blurry on the left side that you can see it mostly because of the landscape so if I have that, if I leave that, so that, that peripheral vision is kind of fuzzy over there, let's say at 60%, and let's see, uh, no, we want this probably on half, and then we can do this, so it's, uh, and now restart here, my VR session, so as you can see, my frame rates are 30, there's just a little bit of tearing off to the left upper corner there from the changes I can see like a almost like a line of ants marching along the hill out of my very very far right eye so like I said my frame rates right now are the same that they have been but my quality settings have been increased my resolution has also been increased if I was to show you my resolution right now I think you'll see in my previous videos, I run it normally around 70, and right now I have it up on 85. And like I said, I mean, right now I can read warning, assure that all contaminants, including water, are removed from fuel and fuel system before flight. Standby battery on test off arm. Again, I can see like a line of ants marching over there. And so I'm going to readjust it because I really don't want that in 
my view. I had it earlier without that, so we're going to go back here. We're going to open it back up. Come back down here. Uh, I don't know which one is in a ring or which one is out of ring. And unfortunately, it's still mapped to a keyboard. Oops. So when I change it, my and other settings go down. Okay, so that should have gotten rid of the black lines out of my peripheral. There's just a touch of it over there. Um, am I willing to put up with that for improved graphics and performance? I think so. I think so. But like I said, I'm going to tweak it some more. But let me show you one other really, to me, one of the nicest features is under the appearance menu and that's this now you can change your contrast and I think I've mentioned in the past how I feel that things are a little bit bright in this game and you can see I can turn those trees way down I could change my saturation which means if areas are too green for me which this game is in a lot of areas we could turn that down And these settings take effect immediately. You don't have to reset the virtual reality plate like you do when you're changing the resolution. Uh, but you can see now, my trees are much darker green. I can add the blue to the sky, which I did, to make my skies a nicer, deeper blue. So this tool is looking really, really awesome. Again. My frame rates are better, even though they're the same number right now, I claim that they're better because my resolution has been increased three times what it was, well not three times, but three steps from where it was. It was down around 70 and now it's 85. I consider, you know, steps being five, a movement of five. So if I go from 70 to 75, to me that's a step. I just find it easier to, to describe and talk about that way. But like I said, I've increased my resolution. I've increased my graphic settings. I've been able to play with the colors and get a darker blue in the sky and deeper greens in the ground, in the trees. I'm not get, losing any frame rates. And so, boy, that's a pretty wild looking river. <laughs> there you go. So I will definitely do a much more in-depth video after I've had more time to play with this. But it looks like this is going to be another game changer from the team that provided us with the open NS NAS scaler tool. I think she's talking to me. Yeah, okay, she was. <laughs> so anyhow, there you go. Awesome tool. I think it's going to really make some changes for people. And again, my specs are in my description. This is a Quest 2. I use Steam VR and virtual desktop with the Oculus headset, not the Oculus cable. I don't use any of the Oculus tools. I find their performance to be about half of what I can get using Steam VR and my. My chip is an RTX. Oh, be quiet, woman. My chip. I didn't ask you. She should be off now, right? So, um, sorry about that. Yeah, um, I don't use the open, uh, the uh, the Oculus tools. I don't use the tray tool, and I don't use the debug tool. I use virtual desktop and Steam VR. This version of Microsoft Flight Sim is the MS Store version. I was among one of the first thousand, I believe, was my number was below a thousand when I pre-ordered this before it was released in 2020. So, yeah, it's um, it's all in the description to the video. But yeah, you're definitely going to want to check this out, people. This is uh, amazing. What this can do to this game now. Alright, we'll see you soon with more in-depth information.